Wake up, the morning routine that will change your life. In this episode, we're gonna go through a morning routine that will change your life. So stay tuned, watch it till the end. In this episode, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to make things your morning routine and how to start it off and make you feel better for the day and also creating a habit at the same time. The key word here is routine. What we're trying to create is a new routine in your day. If you already have one, it's actually going to be an easier job for you because we're gonna get into exactly how that works in just a minute. I'm gonna share with you what I do and what's changed my life and I'm gonna let you pick and choose what you wanna incorporate, maybe you incorporate it all, maybe you already do more, this and more. So let's get into it. I wake up early. I have a tendency to wake up early. I like waking up early so I can get my routine my, uh, out of the way. And not just, oh, I wanna get it out of the way, but I feel so much better after I've done my morning routine. I think you will too. So waking up early is the first thing I do. So when I wake up, I've been dehydrated all night. I haven't had anything to drink, so I like to get some fresh water into me first and foremost. So after I've had some water, I get myself settled back in, I like to do some breath work. I like to get at least 40 deep breaths in. And I don't know if you've heard of Wim Hof, maybe you've heard me talk about him before, but he does some cold plunge stuff, but he also does some great breath work. So breath work, I mean, we lack that oxygen anyways. The breath is a huge piece for us to actually do some healing, get fresh oxygen in, oxygenate the blood, get things circulating. So that is a great way to start your morning. Get, so far we're off to two great things. We're getting uh, some fresh water into us and some good oxygen into our lungs, waking us up, waking up the body, getting things circulating again, just by simply doing breath work. The next thing I like to do is I like to get my mind right. I'm already kind of buzzing, my, I'm vibrating a little bit because of that breath work. And now I could sit there and I could work on my meditation. I like to get in about 10 minutes, nothing crazy. You could do as little as five minutes, but even if it's 10, 15 minutes, great. I could sit in, get my intention, get everything focused for the day. If you haven't meditated before, I when I talk to a lot of people, they say, gosh, John, meditation, it's so hard. I understand. It's hard for me too, especially with ADD and things like that. But the longer I do it, the better I become at it. And it actually helps. What, what, what's the benefits of it? Well, there's a lot. But for me, one of the keys is that before I react, I can have that moment to pause before I react. And it allows me to kind of be an observer on what's going on in my life instead of reacting to everything. In fact, they say the busier you are, the more you should meditate. Like if you have a really busy day, that means you should probably double the time that you have to meditate. Oftentimes people say, I don't have time to meditate. That's the time that you actually need to take to meditate. Journaling, journaling, identifying goals, just kind of just getting on paper uh, for the day, like whatever thoughts are going through your mind in the morning, getting them on paper allows you to discard them allows for new ideas and new thoughts to uh, prosper in your mind. Oftentimes we recirculate the same thoughts over and over and over because we're holding on to them for whatever reason. But as soon as we write them down, the power of writing them down allows you to discard them and allow new information into the brain. So this is huge journaling. Uh, you could follow 369. Uh, that's journaling as well. It uh, allows you to set goals and obtain them and focus in very narrowly on uh, what you want to accomplish. So either way, journaling, 369, any form of it, you, it doesn't need, even need to be very specific. Just whatever's in your mind, getting it on paper is a powerful thing. The next thing I do is I work out. I'm lucky to have a gym nearby, so I go down, I work out, I get that in. It doesn't just mean you have to work out with weights and things like that. It could be yoga, it could be spin, it could be running. You name it, there's so many different ways. You wanna get your heart elevated, you wanna get your endorphins going. This sets the day for me. If I don't work out, I'm sluggish all day. It's just one of those things, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. So when I'm able to actually get a good workout in for the day, it sets the tone for the rest of it. My serotonin levels, endorphins are, are rushing. Everything ends up being phenomenal when I work out. So 
even if it's a short period of time, and let's say you're not a morning person, but you wake up, you take your water, you drink your water, you, maybe you journal, maybe you take one of these and you stick with it. Once you get one of those things down, then add something else to it. This is called habit stacking. If you've watched my videos, you've heard me talk about it before. It's a powerful way for you to incorporate a lot of good things around one habit. It's like taking something, your foundation, like whether getting up and just simply drinking water, then now journaling or meditating or doing your breath work or working out, whatever it might be, you're stacking a habit in front or behind. But when you have that one core thing that's embedded, you can do that. I choose the morning. It just allows me to finish my day as far as those, that routine goes and move on to the rest of my day. You may have something else. Maybe you, maybe you have a habit of working out in the afternoon. Well, around that time, you need to do um, what I call blocking the time. So then you could complete those things that a lot of us finish in the morning just because it's quiet, phone's not ringing, so on and so on. I just like to have that time because I don't necessarily need to block it. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to do it. I usually don't have a lot of people wanting things from me at 4.30 in the morning. So anyways, food for thought, habit stacking. Is there a habit that you have or that you want that you're trying to accomplish? Do me a favor. Make a comment below in the comment section. I'd like to hear what it is that you do or you're shooting to do or want to do by identifying it down there. Also, give me a like while you're down there making that comment. When I'm working out, here's the thing. You guys might think I'm crazy, but I go back to habit stacking. What I try to do is I want good information in my brain, so I listen to either a podcast, I listen to a book, but something informative, something where I'm taking care of two things at once. Yeah, okay, so is it weird? Yeah, it probably was in the beginning, but now I actually really enjoy listening to something that's positive, that's impacting me in a positive way, and I'm learning why I'm working out. So something to think about. Give it a shot. Try it. See what you think. A great book that I recommend is Tools for Titans. If you're liking this, you'll probably like Tools for Titans, maybe a book to, to check out. It's one that I plug into and it's not like one of those ones that you have to finish right away. You can take it in bite-sized chunks. They're ba it's basically interview style. So check that book out, Tools for Titans. I think you'll like it. Okay, so I've listened to the book. I've done my workout. I've done all this routine. So now what's left? Done, right? No. Now we do a cold plunge. So I sub then submerge myself into a cold plunge of water, basically 37 to 42 degrees for a minimum of three minutes. I feel alive after I, I've done that. If you haven't done a cold plunge, I recommend you starting at least with doing a cold shower. Cold showers, it, it, it circulates your blood. There's a lot of health benefits to it, but I feel absolutely amazing. And for that alone, I love doing the cold plunge. I have energy like for three to four hours as soon as I'm done doing that. Another couple things that I've learned to do, I've uh, eliminated, for the most part, not all days, but I have eliminated a lot of coffee use and I try to eat healthier. If I'm doing all these things to be healthier, I should probably eliminate some of those things like maybe your alcohol consumption, maybe sugar intake, you know, maybe some of the bad carbs, maybe you want to start eating healthier organic foods. You could even, heck, go vegan. I don't know. These are all things that I'm striving uh, for. At this point, I'm not, but hey, next time maybe, maybe I'll be floating here, chewing on some grass or something. At the end of the day, good food in the body, good information in the brain equals great wealth in the wallet. It could call it abundance or whatever in all different areas. When you're living right, just seems like things tend to fall in place. So doing these things, you don't need to do them all, but pick a couple, see if you like them. If you don't, switch them out. But again, like even the cold plunge for me, it, I didn't care for it right at the beginning, but gosh, then when it clicked, I absolutely love it. So give these things a shot. Try more than once. Let it grow on you. See if it works for you. Like now, I, again, I love doing it every single day. A lot of these things I do. So some of them are, are a little bit more forced. They're, they're not as uh, easy for me, right? Like writing. I mean, if it's a crayon, great. But listen, it's, it's practice and repetition. What is it? It's a routine. If you found this episode helpful and inspiring, do me a favor. Go and watch the episode about intermittent fasting. I think that you'll like it. It's something, again, that's changed my life, and it's something I incorporate as well. Thank you for watching. Now let's go. Go watch the video.